Oh, hey, you two. How the bloody fucking heck are you? Quick question. Do you have trouble squatting down low? Or maybe when you're doing your squats, your hips or something just feels a little bit gunky and not quite right? And do you wish that you had the perfect three-step squat mobility sequence that can help you to lift more confidently, feel safer and feel stronger? Well, I'm glad you're watching because that's exactly what I'm gonna be teaching you in this video today. We're gonna to be breaking down my three-step mobility squat sequence, which has these three different exercises and routines to be able to help you to be able to warm up properly and make sure that you are prepared for your squats. And if you have trouble squatting low, then this could be an absolute game changer because this particular sequence has helped so many of the booty based babes who struggled to actually hit proper squat depth to then be able to squat ass to grass almost instantaneously. Now, in this video, I'm actually not going to be breaking it down here right now because I already have a clip prepared for you from my Learn to Lift online course, which has access to three different seminars that we've run down here where I teach, cue, coach, and correct all of the booty based babes on all of the big lifts and booty exercises which help to transform their body. So I'm going to leave a link in the description below if you want to go and check that course out. But for now, let's break it down and let's get a look at the clip from this Learn to Lift course and check out this squat mobility sequence. The reason why people can't squat is their body, or why, 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 rather why they can't squat low, is their body's just unfamiliar with getting down that low. Now, I'm not huge on stretching, but a little bit of mobility work before like a big movement like a squat is always a good idea, okay? Because really, lifting weights is just loaded stretching anyway. But if your body's not comfortable getting down that low first, then we come and do this to fix up the few of the main issues that we really have with our, our squats. So we come down, now who can see how fucking amazingly low Brittany can squat here? Yeah, can we get a round of applause? <laughs> yeah, I told you, the thought can squat. So, <laughs> so <laughs> now first is first, is one thing that people don't really realize here is Britt's gonna be actually pulling her chest in and up into the bar. So she's gonna be feeling that tightness and engagement through upper back. And we're doing this close to a pole to make sure her body stays upright and not folded forward. We wanna be able to stay somewhat upright in a squat, otherwise if you tip forward and the bar falls off our back, we die. We don't wanna die. Maybe not today at least, anyway. Now, second thing you might notice is Brittany's driving her elbows out into her knees, okay? And she's opening up her hips because we need to create space in our hips for us to be able to come down when we squat. And we need to, remember, externally rotate, oof, activate the glutes, and then get into that hip mobility to get down into what we call the hole of the squat, okay? And lastly, Britt's gonna be rocking her knees over her toes, but making sure that she keeps her heels on the ground. Okay, the number one reason why people, not the number one, but one of the number one reasons why people can't squat well is that shit ankle mobility. Who's ever done a heel elevated squat? Yeah, a couple of people here in the air. Yeah, and now a lot of the time, but really all we're doing is giving you artificial mobility so you can get down lower. And some people need it, some people don't. Regardless, it's not a bad thing, but it's a nice idea just to come in and get some active mobility. So we're stretching all through the inner thighs and adductors. We're making sure we get the anchor mobility and we're staying up really nice and tall to make sure we can stay in that nice upright position. One last thing you can do as well, if you'd like to, is actually come through and stretch your chest. And you might think to yourself, why the fuck am I stretching my chest? I'm about to fucking squat. Yeah, come on up, Brittany, sorry. Yeah. Round of applause for Brittany, everybody. Really beautiful one. I come through, and I might actually get you to demonstrate this, okay? And you might think to yourself, I'm, I'm about to squat, why would I need to stretch my chest? Here yeah, you are, but you're about to get under a barbell, and you need to actually have flexibility through your chest to comfortably get in there. A lot of people can squat well, put them under a barbell, and they do a shit job. A lot of the time, it's people who work at a desk all day, they're very internally rotated, and they have shit posture, and they can't actually get under a barbell because they just can't open up and get into that position. Or if they do, they overextend and they feel shit because they've just lost that initial spine and that's not what we want. So when we do this chest stretch, we want to get into finding that dead bug position and make sure that we squeeze the glutes, keep the ribs down, start down here for you, Brittany. Now, as we come up, if Brittany loses that, then she's just going to just flare the ribs to me as you come back. And that's, look, we're still stretching the chest, but it's not as effective because we're just really compensating through thoracic extension, okay? Or through like mid-back extension. So we wanna to try to keep that down and then come all the way around. Just like so. Alrighty. And if you'd like to keep going, then you can do it with a band as well. A lot of the time we do it with a band. 
And then this is just really a great little just mobility sequence you can do every day anyway, but it's particularly good before you squat because it's one thing to stretch a muscle, it's another thing to maintain that actual mobility. And what you need to usually do is strengthen the opposing muscles to be able to keep it there. If you have shit posture and you just go and stretch your chest, that's great, but it's gonna bounce back. You know what I mean? Especially if the small muscles that are opposing it can't actually keep it there. So Brittany, hold this up and hold underhand for me. We're gonna go for some band pull aparts. So pulling from around about eye height down to just above the boobies. Yep. Nah, so with the arms straight, just like this. Brett's never done this before. I haven't. Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah, and you really just strengthen all up through the rear delts and all those muscles that are responsible for keeping you back, okay, as you keep that chest nice and open, okay? Fantastic. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Feels good, doesn't it? Again, that's not necessarily just squat specific, but it's a good idea. It's a good idea before you squat. It's a good idea to do it every day, no matter what. Before we get under a bar, if you don't have the greatest barbell squat, or if you just want to warm up appropriately and get better squat depth, you can use heel elevation if you need it. And some of you will, some of you won't, it's completely fine. But what I usually recommend is doing that stretch and do that stretch for about 45 seconds or so, all right? Just long enough to hold, long enough to get. And then come in for a goblet squat, okay? With a two second pause at the bottom because we've just accessed that mobility and got down really low. Now, we wanna be able to load that mobility in a front squat position so we can do like help us to stay more upright and help us to get into that position a little bit better and then get comfortable with a weight in a loaded position down low. That time, by the time you get the barbell up on your back, your body's like, oh, okay, cool, I'm not freaking out to go low. I've been down there. I haven't just stretched down there, but I've stretched down there and paused down there with weight in a nice strong upright position. I'm not scared anymore, let's fuck shit up. So that's your little squat warm up for people who are shit at squatting. Some people don't need to do that. Some people can just get under the bar and just go, what boom, like you. So, yeah. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Next time you are about to get under a barbell and do some squats, give this sequence a try and see if it helps you to feel just that little bit more jacked and juicy. And if you wanna access the entire Learn to Lift online course with the three separate seminars that we've run down here at the Booty Base, so you can feel like you've just transported here and you're getting coached by me in live time, then again, the link is in the description below. Or you can just keep on following me here on YouTube and keep on absorbing all this amazing information because I know you're loving it and you're gobbling it all up. And if you really are loving it, then why don't you do me a favor and like, comment, Subscribe, turn on that note for motherfucking Cation Bell. And ladies and gentlemen, you know what they say. YouTube! Scrubbing up my foot! <laughs>